uh, the weekly chat that we host on Nebraska Medicine's Facebook page. Uh, I'm Christine Buman. Today, I'm joined by neurologist Dr. Pierre Fayad. Uh, May is actually coming to a close, which also means that so is National Stroke Awareness Month. Uh, we're going to talk about our comprehensive stroke program and what that means for our patient care here. So thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you, Christine. Yeah, it's nice to have you back. Um, thank you. And just a couple of things for our viewers is, you know, as we start this discussion, we just want to remind you that the information contained in this chat is for informational purposes only. So if you have specific questions um, regarding your care or your current condition, please reach out to your doctor directly. And the other thing is while you're watching this chat, please feel free to ask any questions in the comments section below. Great. So, so before we go on to yeah. your question, want to bring it back so although this is the end of stroke awareness month stroke awareness goes for the whole year that's so true. this is only the beginning <laughs> that is very true thank All you right. <laughs> um so i guess you know let's you know kind of go back there and just yeah. teach everyone again what is a stroke so a stroke is uh, a damage a permanent damage to the brain that uh, produces deficits and the damage is caused by blood a uh, problem in the blood vessels that feed the brain. So th we have two major types of stroke, uh, hemorrhagic stroke where the brain is damaged by a rupture of a blood vessel mm -hmm. and an ischemic stroke where the brain is damaged by a lack of blood flow that comes to it. Uh, so these are the two major types of stroke and of course when they first present sometimes it's hard to know which one is which unless you do more testing and so on. Sure. And um, you know how do we recognize that someone is having a stroke? Usually the most common types of symptoms are uh, usually they happen suddenly. So someone has a sudden weakness or numbness on one side or the other sudden loss of speech or understanding speech or uh, having slurred speech, having a loss of vision in one eye or the other or on one side or the other, having a sudden loss of balance or having the worst headache that they ever have experienced before. So these are the major types. Now, to make it simpler on how to recognize a stroke, it's always important to uh, remember that stroke is an emergency and the sooner you recognize that someone is having a stroke the better it is to get them to medical care as soon as possible right. the best way to do that is to do what is called the fast or check them out whether they have face weakness whether they have weakness in the arm which is f a not lift, right? yeah not be able to keep yep. the arm up uh, or when you ask them to smile, you know, the one, uh, their s face is crooked. And, um, you know, check them out, ask them something to speak. And if the speech is slurred or inappropriate, then that's the S in fast. And finally, know what time it happened. All of these are critical things to get the patient to the care they need mm -hmm. and get the care as soon as possible. Now, once you determine that someone is having a stroke and call 911, that's the best thing you can do because the emergency system is already prepared to screen and take patients to wherever they need to go. And that's the complicated part right. because stroke is a complicated disease. Yep. You know, we have several types, we have several causes, we have uh, some that are <laughs> severe, some that are mild, some that may, you may not even recognize that they are a stroke. And that's why it is important to get the care for stroke with, with a place or with uh, physicians or teams that are trained and prepared yep. and rehearsed yep. to take care of patients with stroke. And so one thing I think that we talked about earlier in the month was don't be the one to drive the patient to the hospital. Make sure that you're calling 911. Exactly. You're using emergency services to get you here. Um, and that also goes to say that not all stroke care is the same. So emergency services is gonna know 
where do we take this person? Where, you know, where are they going to get the care appropriate? And so that leads us to our comprehensive stroke center. So yeah. what what does that mean? Yeah. You know, for our care here versus you know other facilities. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a very good question, and it's complicated because the care for stroke is so complex and it has to span a huge area yep. and it is hard for everyone to provide it in every single area so this is why all the hospitals are classified in different categories that start with someone that or, or a hospital that has no interest in stroke and that's the hospital you don't want to go to right right or be in a stroke ready hospital meaning that someone that the hospital is ready to, is prepared to screen patients with stroke, stabilize them, and if they need treatment, they go somewhere else. Okay. Next step up is primary stroke center, and that is a center that is prepared to diagnose a stroke, manage the basic things, and give TPA or a clot buster if, uh, if the patient needs it and determine if the patient needs further care as well, like a thrombectomy or taking the clot out that has caused the stroke and referring that patient to a comprehensive stroke center or a thrombectomy ready uh, stroke center. Okay. Uh, so these are the two higher level of, of care. A thrombectomy uh, certified center uh, is able to take the clot out. They are certified to take care of ischemic stroke, but they are not certified to do the full spectrum okay. of stroke care. <laughs> and that's where the Comprehensive Stroke Center comes, is the, the center that is able to provide everything that is necessary for any type of stroke, any time of the day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Sure. And to be a comprehensive stroke center, you also have to go through a special certification. That's Is that correct. right? Well, any of those certifications, so the primary stroke okay. center, the thrombectomy ready center, and uh, the comprehensive stroke center, all have to submit to certification, and the Joint Commission is really the main certifying body nationally. Okay. And they uh, come, and you first do an application, and then you have to go through um, a verification of your capabilities and that has to be renewed on a yearly basis. And uh, each one of those levels of care has to meet certain criteria. Mm -hmm. The most demanding one, of course, is the Comprehensive Stroke Center, just because they have to serve the whole community. They have to be ready for any emergencies, any time, and have um, the capabilities of having uh, neurosurgeons, having interventionalists, having uh, stroke specialists, and having an intensive care that where nurses are also trained, certified, and capable of providing that care 24 hours a day uh, mm -hmm. for the most complex and advanced and difficult patients. Sure, I was gonna ask you a little bit to elaborate what does it mean for patients um, to come to a comprehensive stroke center? I think you said a couple of things where, you know, ready 24 seven to treat both kinds of stroke and all the symptoms that can go with it. Um, yes. And then also I wanna highlight a little bit more that neuro ICU mm -hmm. and you know, what that means. Well, it means patient. this is the uh, patients who are the sickest and those who get the thrombectomy, get the um, clot busters, and, and so on, these need uh, very, very uh, close follow-up and mm -hmm. care and observation and treatment. The blood pressure needs to be controlled. Uh, the, the pressure inside the skull needs to be controlled. Their vital signs need to be controlled. Their breathing, everything is done by the minute. And they get monitored very closely. And they have, uh, nurses that are trained to do that and they get certified and spend time in education and training and re get recertified in order to provide such advanced care. Uh, so it's a team effort. It's mm -hmm. a coordinated team um, 
specialization that is able to provide this continuity of care from when they are sickest in the emergency room, uh, getting the intervention, getting monitored after the intervention, ensuring that they have no complications, and then moving on to a regular bed where the nurses are also trained specifically to take care of patients with stroke. They get the education, the rehabilitation, and then they move on to get some extra acute rehabilitation or wherever they need to go, or home, hopefully, right. uh, from the hospital. So shout out to our nurses, right? Because Absolutely. they're doing some great work and they're making the neuro floor just a much you know, better Absolutely. place, right? Absolutely. So it is, it is a, just like they say, it takes a village to raise a kid yep. and it takes a village to take care of a patient with stroke. This sure. is why team care is essential. There is no single person that can take care of stroke. It has to be a coordinated team effort that can provide yeah, that. And it starts with the person that calls, right? That's correct. So, yes. Um, one other thing I think that we should circle back, you know, this month on is that prevention is really key. So what recommendations would you have for our viewers to lower their risk of stroke and potentially, you know, prevent one from happening? Well, although we are finishing with that, I would say that this is the most important yep. thing to do. We have, as we discussed, tremendous advances in dealing with a stroke and reversing it when it happens mm -hmm. and preventing the deficits from happening. But we are still not 100% able to restore someone after a stroke to what they were before. So. The best treatment for stroke is not to have one, and that's what prevention is about. Sure. Identifying who is at risk for stroke. Am I at risk for stroke? How do I know that? Uh, well, you need to know what is your family history? What is your personal history? Do you have diabetes? Do you have heart disease? Do you have atrial fibrillation? Do you have cholesterol? Does it run in your family? And if it runs in your family, then you should check yourself because you probably has gotten some of those genes. Right. And if you have some of those genes, one way or the other, it may show up later on. With age, all of these risk factors appear. Got it. So the sooner you are able to know what they are, the better it is at preventing complications from them. Um, smoking, for example, if you smoke, stop it. If you drink alcohol excessively, stop it. If you use street drugs, stop them because all of yep. these raise the risk for stroke. All of us are going to age. So with age, the risk of stroke doubles after the age of 65 with every 10 years. Wow. So with age, stroke may be a certainty if you don't take care of yourself. So the key things for stroke prevention is to identify what exactly are you at risk for stroke. Is the risk from your heart? For example, do you have atrial fibrillation? Yep. If you have it, then you need to be on a blood thinner to prevent a stroke. If you have heart disease, you need to treat that to prevent a stroke. Uh, maybe you, all you need to be is on a baby aspirin Mm -hmm. and uh, maybe on a cholesterol-lowering agent. But remember that the most important risk factor because of its prevalence uh, is high blood pressure. And it's, this is why it's called the silent killer because a lot of people have it and don't know that they have it unless they measure it. Yep. So if high blood pressure runs in your family, measure your blood pressure. Don't say, well, I went to the doctor once 10 years ago and it was fine. That's right. not enough. So uh, knowing that you have the risk factors, treating it and lowering those risk factors, getting a healthy diet, a Mediterranean diet, what is called a Mediterranean diet, where you have f more uh, fish than uh, red meat. Yeah. I know this is something bad to recommend in Nebraska, but it is the truth. You have to 
eat more chicken and more eat more uh, more fish. You have to eat more vegetables and fats, uh, right. and fruits. Uh, so all of these things and new and nuts as well. Mm -hmm. So all of these things are very good strategies to prevent a stroke. Perfect. Thank you. All Some right. things to work on, right? Yeah. <laughs> all of us. Can all do of that. us need to. All of us can do that. Exactly. That's for sure. So. I don't think we received any questions today, so okay. um, I just want to thank you again for joining us. Any My other pleasure. kind of closing thoughts that you want our viewers to know? Closing thought, a stroke is something you don't want to have. Yes. So prevent it, but if you have it, we are prepared to take care of it. And uh, don't hesitate to yep. get the care when you need it, even before you have it, so that you can prevent it from happening. That's a good point. Uh, and also, if you need to uh, find the FAST uh, acronym that we had talked about, we have the infographic on our Facebook page. So go ahead and just download that, stick it up on your fridge. Um, and or then, you can go to the American Stroke Association website. Oh, there you they go. They have plenty of information available on all the risk factors sure. and so on. Yeah. All right. Well, that concludes the chat today. So if you right. need to find a Nebraska Medicine Clinic near you, just go ahead and call 800-922-0000. Or you can also find more information on nebraskamed.com. And thank you again for watching. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Christine. And join us next week for, believe it or not, talking about school physicals.